Hello, my name is Anna Sterling, and this video will briefly explain the concept of moving averages, both simple and exponential. So, before we can really start talking about moving averages, we need to have some data to work with. This type of analysis is usually used to forecast sales data and stock figures, so the information will contain time period and numerical figures, usually dollars. You can see when the data is graphed that there are dynamic high and low points. While you can see a trend developing toward the end of the month, predicting what was going to happen earlier would be somewhat difficult. If we wanted to get a general idea of what was going on, we could use a simple moving average, or SMA. SMA is based on something we are already familiar with, a mathematical mean or average. However, because it is a moving average, the average is calculated for a specific time period, not the entire data set. It's important to note that all of the data has an equal impact on the resulting average. For example, here we're looking at a time period of five days. So to calculate the average, we would add all of the values from each period we want to average, period one, period two, period three, period four, and period five, then divide by five. If we're using the data from the table shown earlier, we can choose any day, in this case day 17, and calculate a five-day SMA of historical data by adding the value of the previous periods. January 13th, 2.2, January 14th, 2.7, January 15th, 2.3, January 16th, 2.7, and January 17th, 2.2, to get 12.1 and divide that by 5 to get our SMA of 242. If we graph the SMA for January, we see that the dynamic highs and lows become less pronounced. Now the 5-day SMA for January shown in this graph obviously doesn't apply to January 1st through 4th because we don't have 5 days of data to average. So those days are a moving average based on the number of days worth of data available. For instance, day 3 would be day 1 plus day 2 plus day 3 divided by 3. When we compare the data lines on a graph, we see that the overall trends are similar, but the SMA exhibits two very different characteristics from the original data. One, it shows a drastically reduced rate of change, and two, it lags behind the actual changes. Now that we understand simple moving average and some of its limitations, we can talk about exponential moving average, or EMA and how it addresses some of the limitations of SMA. In EMA, all of the historical data doesn't have the same impact on the calculated average. The more recent data has more impact than the older historical data. This impact decreases exponentially over time. You can think of it kind of like weighted grades. Certain items have more impact on your grade, so they're given more weight or a larger percent of the total calculation. Now, calculating an EMA is a little more complicated than calculating an SMA, as the name alludes to, simple versus exponential. To begin, we have to calculate the multiplier. This is the exponential factor that will be applied to the historical data. To do this, we divide 2 by the time period plus 1. So for a 5-day EMA, we would divide 2 by 5 plus 1, or 6, to get 0.33. Once you have calculated the multiplier, you can calculate your EMA. This is based on the assumption that you have the EMA of the previous day. If you're just beginning to analyze your data, you can use the SMA of the previous day in place of the previous day's EMA. We're going to calculate the 5-day EMA for day 10. I already know the EMA from day 9, so the formula is the day's actual data times the multiplier plus the EMA of the previous day times 1 minus the multiplier. So 2.9 times 0 0.33 plus 2.44 times 1 minus 0 0.33, which equals 2.59. 
So you might be saying to yourself, okay, that's a nice formula, but where's the exponential part of it? Well, if we look at the look at it by breaking it down a little bit, we can see that the current day's data, 2.9, has a weight of 0 0.957. If we look at the previous four days of data, we see that each one, using just a simple average, would only have a weight of 0 0.4. Zero 0.09. Now obviously a simple average would apply the same value to the four days, but in reality the 1.635 is distributed over the four days proportionately based on the time. I'm not a math person, so I'm not going to try and explain the true mathematical nature of it, but remember that the previous day's EMA already applied the weight based on time. Okay, enough about math. Let's look at the data on the graph. Obviously, the five-day EMA begins on day five because we don't have enough data to calculate it before then. And as I mentioned earlier, day five's EMA is calculated using a five-day SMA in lieu of the previous day's EMA. We can see that the EMA graph looks like a cross between the actual data and SMA. And I'll show you all three together in a minute. But first, let's compare the EMA and the actual data on a graph. We see that the EMA line more closely resembles the shape of the data than the SMA did, more accurately representing the rate of change. So if we compare the SMA and the EMA for the same five day period, we see that the EMA rea reacts more quickly to changes in data, reducing the lag SMA presents. When we compare the actual data in the five day SMA and EMA, we easily see that the EMA more closely represents the actual data and responds to changes quicker than the SMA. However, neither of these moving averages is perfect, so many analysts use a combination or an average of both moving averages to forecast. This is represented by the blue line with triangles on this graph. Well, I hope you have a little better understanding of moving averages now. All of the information presented here was obtained by researching moving averages on the websites listed. I created the sample data and performed all of the calculations using Excel.